Ladies and gentlemen, the Harris Walls ticket, well, they're getting ready for a bus tour, but from what we're seeing, it looks more like a trip to political purgatory. Picture this, low turnout events that couldn't fill a high school gym, scripted interactions, they make infomercials look spontaneous, and a candidate who seems more interested in reading teleprompters than talking to real Americans. It's a campaign trail that's becoming a trail of tears for the Democrat Party, so buckle up, folks, because we're about to take you on a bumpy ride through the Harris Walls misadventures. Now, speaking of valuable resources, let's talk about copper. World Copper Limited, they're sitting on a gold mine, or should I say a copper mine, with 7 million tons of copper waiting to be processed. That's a potential $200 million in revenue before full production. As green technologies surge, so does copper demand. World Copper Trades as WCU on the TSX Venture and WCUFF on the OTC. So this could be your chance to invest in America's future. Remember, always do your own research, but don't let this opportunity pass you by. Check the description for more details. You don't want to miss that. Okay, now let's get into this story. Of course, you know, Kamala has been AWOL from the actual press, the press that that just fawns over her day in and day out. But she won't talk to them. She won't interview with them. And this is what, what's really interesting. This, um, this is Jim Acosta. Okay, he's, he is the, you know, the bane of the uh, Trump campaign's existence. Listen to this. Uh, would it kill you guys to have a press conference? Why hasn't she had a press conference? <laughs> this is Jim Acosta. He's actually questioning it. <laughs> Listen, the vice president and Governor Walls uh, have been busy crisscrossing this country since uh, the launch of this campaign and adding uh, Governor Walls to the ticket. You saw the ways in which uh, they went to, across the battleground states last week, uh, generating rallies of, of thousands, 10,000 here, 15,000 there. Uh, yeah. But, but Michael, you know, a campaign do, rally uh, is not a press forward, conference. Be I, <laughs> do you mind if I cut in? I mean, you know, a campaign rally is not a press conference. Why hasn't she had a press conference? She's the vice president. She can handle the questions. Why not do it? Oh, yeah, we absolutely are going to do it. You hear her take questions as she's out on the stump. And she's, as she said last week, uh, we're going to be having a sit down interview here before the end of the month. Uh, what she's going to be focused Clock's on, ticking, and what this campaign is going to be focused on, is communicating directly with the voters that are actually going to decide the pathway to 270 electoral votes. That's why she commit to a press conference this week. The this past week. That's why we're doing a bus tour in Pennsylvania yeah. as we head into Chicago. And it's why we'll sit down for an interview before the end of the month uh, to make sure that we can have a deep dive conversation yeah. about the vision uh, that Kamala Harris has for where she wants to take this country and the contrast that we're going to have with Donald Trump. We're going to have yeah. plenty of opportunities but, to do that uh, throughout the Michael, rest of uh, the one interview by the end of the end month, of this month and throughout the rest of the campaign. I, I, I don't I don't want to, you know, belabor this, but one interview before the end of the month. I mean, that's <laughs> that's not a lot. I mean, can you commit to a press conference before the end of the month? Press conference. We will commit to directly engage with the voters that are actually going to decide this election. And oh. that is going to be uh, complete with rallies, with sit-down interviews, with press conferences, with all yeah, the sure. digital assets that we have at our disposal. <laughs> digital uh, assets, he says. Uh, digital assets. Like our last report. <laughs> digital assets. You mean all the paid influencers? <laughs> all your fake Google ads? I mean, the fact that Jim Acosta is getting frustrated, that actually uh, amuses me. Because he's like, what, are you going to do one interview? He's like, we're going to do one sit-down interview. One sit-down. And he's like, no, that's not a press conference. <laughs> a sit-down interview is a structured, formal, one-on-one -on -one interview. A press conference is when you're getting questions fired at you from all directions. I mean, you've seen Trump's press conferences, totally unscripted. He just goes, okay, you you go, you go, you go, you go. But when Biden, when Biden does his, it's like this. Um, John Smith from Washington Post. And he's got a picture next to the name. Oh, that's him right there. <laughs> I, I mean, I can imagine that's what's going to happen with Kamala if she even does an actual press conference. She'll have a cheat sheet, too, because, you know, she's not all there either. Yeah, we're going to do one before the end of the month. Okay, it's uh, hmm, August 15th. 
Yeah, when's that going to be? You got, what, 15 days? Yeah, we'll see. That's not a, a, a sit-down interview. It's not a press conference. Okay. Oh, and uh, so here's some cringe for you. Cringe alert. And, of course, this is a Brooklyn dad defiant. He is one of the um, biggest uh, Biden brown nosers, Kamala Harris brown nosers, on X. This guy is uh, is trash incarnate. Wait. But oh yeah, yay, Wait. yay, Wait. yay, <laughs> yay, win! <Wait. laughs> oh man, so cringe. And he says, "I love watching the Harris Walls ticket, having so much fun on the campaign trail. This is how we Wait. win." Yeah, dude, whatever. Let's see what else this guy. He can't. He this guy just can't. This guy cannot wait. Oh, well, July eleventh. He says when I cast my vote for President Biden, I wasn't expecting much. I wanted Trump out of office. This is his pinned comment. When I cast my vote for President Biden, hey Brooklyn Dad, you may want to go ahead and update that pinned comment because uh, right now it looks like it's going to be Kamala Harris, buddy. <laughs> Oh, give me a break. Uh, oh, here he goes. He's going after Project 2025 on a hidden camera. Yeah. Uh-oh, they caught him on hidden camera. Project 2025, a personnel campaign by the Heritage Foundation. Give me a break. I wasn't planning on scrolling through this guy's feed, but okay, here we go. He's got some retweets about how much he loves. Oh, here we go. Doesn't that look like the Obama ads? Oh, and he's pretty upset that CNN's refusing to air Kamala Harris rallies, but will air Trump's lie-filled fake press conferences. Stop calling CNN a liberal news network. They most certainly are not. Okay, enough airtime for you, buddy. Uh, Post Millennial reporting that uh, Joe Biden tells reporters that Kamala's economic plan is the same as his. Oh, here's the, and here we go. Here, this is Kamala. Oh, this is Kamala getting her new bus. <laughs> He's getting a new bus. Look at my bus! Oh my god, I love it. Uh, oh wow. Uh, Look at the bus. <laughs> it should be the short bus, though. <laughs> She's loving it. Uh, Real Clear Politics, 12 hours ago, reporting the Electoral College still is leaning towards Trump. So that's good news, despite all the fake Google headlines, the fake influencers, the paid propagandists that are going to the DNC to walk into a war zone. Electoral College still leaning towards Trump. Kamala says she's proud of casting the vote which passed the Inflation Reduction Act, which ruined the U.S. economy. She's proud of that. Two years ago, as vice president, I was proud to cast the tie-breaking vote that sent the bill. That gave, that gave Medicare the power to negotiate and let it get to the president's desk. And I was proud when our president, Joe Biden, signed that bill into law. To uh, someone, did somebody say the sound was gone? I'm not sure if that's true or not. Okay, um, because we are streaming this right now. Okay, so we've got, <clears throat> what else have we got here? So sh Kamala gets a new short bus. Electoral College is still leaning towards Trump. Kamala proud of, re of, re of reducing the, uh, <laughs> for signing the Inflation Reduction Act. But let's check this out. Check this out. Six hours ago, <laughs> Texas One says, this administration is a clown show. You don't got to tell me, but this is the proof right here. President Kamala Harris, or Vice President. Look what it says right there. New Orleans, Luciana. Oh. And, of course, you have the, fam the famous DiCaprio meme. They spelt Louisiana wrong. Yeah, someone uh, someone didn't do the spell checker on that, on that graphic. That's how much they, they think about Louisiana. I thought that was a funny little anecdote to present to you guys. 
Now, here's something here. The lie. Kamala Harris claims Trump doesn't talk about policy because it's a catastrophe for most America. The truth, Trump's policy is so good, Kamala Harris is even stealing them. Of course, you've all heard about the uh, no tax on tips thing. Unbelievable. But, uh, you know, I saw I saw an interesting tweet from Roger Stone on that topic, and he said, you know, all you got to do is spin it. Kamala Harris has endorsed Donald Trump's policy, right? So that's basically what this new Twitter account just, I, I just saw this is, you know, Kamala has a, has a, uh, X account called Kamala HQ. Well, thankfully there's now an X account called Kamala HQ lies. The lie Kamala claims Trump doesn't talk about policy because it's a catastrophe. Truth. Trump's policies are so good. Kamala Harris is even stealing them. Harris has not even released her policies, but she's trying to copy Trump on his no tax on tips policy and his strong stance on the border. On Kamala Harris' campaign site right now, there are no policies listed. Trump has listed a 20-point plan for his agenda as well as a 16-page PDF of his entire platform. This is uh, News Nation. Let's see what they're saying here. juxtapose that with the, the fear-mongering we have heard from the right about inflation for the better part of the year. And as it turns out, as the data oh, comes in, as the data comes in, He's actually gaining ground on inflation. Contrast that, we want to talk about policy to Donald Trump's policies. We've had 16 Nobel laureates come out and say that Trump policy will lead oh, but you to don't, inflation. You know, you know that's campaign. We know just that putting Rudy a said inflation will go up to 3.6% under the uh, uh, Trump inflation policies. Taxes will go up on 90% of Americans under the Trump policies. So if we, the reason why Donald Trump stays away from policy is because when you dig into the details of his policy, they're a catastrophe for most of America. Yes, they are a catastrophe for most of America. Oh, turn it up. You got to speak. You got to talk louder than that. I can't hear you. Okay. Um, so since we're talking about like, where is Kamala? Right. Where is she? She's got a new shiny short bus. She's afraid to talk to the press. Jim Acosta, he's like, what's going on? And then we got uh, Stefan. Man, one week. Stefan Smith. Joe Biden stepped. He is not pleased. Down. Stepped aside. As the presumptive Democratic nominee on July 21st. Okay? Now I'm going to look at this right now. I'm looking at my calendar because I just want to make sure. You know, July 21st was a Sunday. We've had one week, two weeks, three weeks, and one day. Since Joe Biden stepped aside. The only damn place we've seen Kamala Harris is at, is at pep rallies. Pep rallies. What's up? Somebody got to say something. And it can't just be the conservatives. Right is right. I'm talking to my sister here. Come on now. You running for the presidency of the United States of America. What you hiding for? <laughs> and I mean hiding in plain sight. Somebody got to say it. Somebody got to say it. Now, you can't be running for the presidency of the United States. Not one single press conference, not one single one-on-one -on -one sit-down interview where somebody gets to question you about the questions that we ask. That's not fair. That's not fair. And if you're a conservative and you out there laying based enough for it, ridiculing her for it, yeah, yeah, trying yeah. to torment her for it or whatever, yeah, it yeah. is perfectly within your right to do so. <laughs> All of you anti-conservatives out there, shut the hell up. That's a valid point. <laughs> Thank but you. But to Thank ask you. her about her record, because she does, she is attached to the Biden record, mm. is definitely apropos, especially when you were bragging about the record. We talked we talk, uh, uh, about buying... Biden being a, a, a transformative president. Well, stand on it then. Stand on it. Which, where you at? Where you at? No George Stephanopoulos, no Meet the Press. <laughs> no State of the Union. What's up? What's up? No Face the Nation. No Politico. No MSNBC. Yep. Where's Kamala. She can't handle a press conference. She can't. She just can't. But she's ready to <laughs> win. <laughs> Make that a meme. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going, folks. 
I'll come here. Okay, this is uh, Heritage Action. Trump talking about uh, Kamala Harris want, uh, wanted to ban fracking. Biden confirms Kamala Harris is tethered to his highly unpopular inflation-inducing massive failure known as Biden. How much does it bother you that Vice President Harris might soon, for political reasons, start to distance herself from your economic She's not going to. You don't think she's going to? How much does it bother you? What was that? Poor hubby. Poor hubby. Oh, man. Oh, that cackle kills me. Trump's, let's see what Trump's saying. Kamala Harris won't end the economic crisis. She will only make it worse. And why hasn't she done it? She talks about it. She's doing a plan. You know, she's going to announce it this week, maybe. She's, she's, she's waiting for me to announce it so she can copy it. Like, remember, a couple of days ago, and Kamala no, Harris. No tax on tips. Yes, sir, we remember. Okay, <clears throat> let's keep going. There's Jim Acosta. We did that. Let's see, let's see, this is a... Uh, if I amnesty. win, you will have... The, if Kamala wins, you will have mass amnesty and citizenship for all of the Biden-Harris illegals that poured into our country. If I win, you will have the largest deportation operation in American history starting at noon Let's on go. Inauguration Day 2025. Let's go. We're waiting. Can't wait. By contrast, I'm announcing today that under my leadership, the United States will commit to the ambitious goal of slashing energy and electricity prices by half, at least, half. We intend to slash prices by half within 12 months at a maximum 18 months. And if it doesn't work out, you'll say, oh, well, I voted for him. I still got him down a lot. But we're looking to do it. We're looking to cut them in half, and we think we'll be able to do better. And every single thing that I promised, I produced. Every single thing. You will never have had energy so low as you will under a certain gentleman known as Donald J. Trump. Have you heard of him? <laughs> So we think your energy bills will be down by 50 to 70 percent. How good would that be for a thing called inflation? How, how good will that be? That'd be really good. That's what we're waiting for. But that's all. Um, that won't happen if uh, Kamala Harris. Win. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, and energy is bad. Let's go back to the short bus. Where's the short bus? Look at the bus. Look at my bus. At least we got the good news here. Electoral College still leaning towards Trump. So, folks, a campaign is only as strong as its connection to the people. And what we're seeing, Eris Wall's connection is about as strong as a wet paper bag in a hurricane. This isn't just a rough patch, it's a full blown crisis of competence. As they stumble from one stage event to another, you've got to wonder. Is this the best the Democrat Party has to offer? So keep your eyes peeled, America, because this comedy of errors is far from over. and The road to the White House is long, and for Harris Walls, it's looking increasingly uphill. <laughs> 